Hi guys. So today I thought I'd bring you along for uh, a little science experiment that I'm starting up um, relating to the drying time or the seasoning time for, uh, for my firewood. Uh, when we first moved up here um, well, about uh, five weeks ago, um, at the beginning of August, um, we, one of the first things I wanted to do was start collecting firewood because it takes a bit of time for it to dry out and you really want your firewood to be as dry as possible when you're burning it. It's much more efficient, you burn a lot less wood and it produces less creosote which uh, can cause problems in your, in your chimney and start chimney fires. Um, so when I first started collecting wood, my really only method of, uh, of storing it to, to hopefully dry out was to stack it uh, in a long row in, on the edge of a, a field facing south um, so it gets a lot of sun and it gets a lot of airflow through it um, and I'm covering it with a, a, a thin uh, black piece of plastic. Um, of course when it rains though th there's still water splashing on it and stuff like that um, but you know that's all I, all I had. I've since built a, uh, a small uh, greenhouse slash woodshed and what I want to do is compare the drying times or the drying rates uh, between the, these two locations. Um, so to do that uh, what I've done is I've marked out uh, well first of all I, I, I felled uh, a tree today um, and I've been trying to, to mostly source standing dead uh, trees because they tend to be the driest um, Today I, uh, I felled a, a tree that was uh, had broken at the top, so the, the top part had come down recently. Uh, from looking at the leaves, I'd say within the last two or three weeks, um, and it was quite a large uh, hard maple tree. And I've divided that maple tree into two piles, so about half of it, or less, around half of it, I've stacked on my field stack, and about half of it I've put in the woodshed, and. This will, I think, give me the, the best possible comparison, um, essentially using one tree in two locations. And so what I've done is, uh, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to pick this up, but I've marked out three pieces of wood um, towards the bottom and labeled them low one, low two, low three. And similar here, medium one, medium two, medium three, and high one, two, and three. And this is on my outside uh, field stack. And I did the same on my uh, greenhouse uh, slash woodshed stack. And we ordered one of these little gizmos, which is a, um, a moisture meter. I'll just turn it on for you. It basically regist uh, registers the, the percentage of uh, moisture in the material. Um, you can actually do this on yourself if you touch these two probes together. It's saying I'm about 21 or 22 percent water. <laughs> actually, it's not too far off what some of these guys are reading. So this guy here is in about the 23 range. Um, so I've uh, measured or metered the moisture content for, our, for, for my, my samples here. And in each case, I uh, probe them uh, right below where uh, my label is so that I get a, a consistent location for the probe each time and recorded the numbers. And uh, I did that as well for the wood in the shed, which I'll show you momentarily. So the numbers varied um, just depending on where in the tree these pieces of wood came from, um, anywhere from about 17% to uh, the highest reading was about 30 percent. And what I'm going to do is track this over time. Um, you know, I've, in the beginning, probably every couple of days, I'll come out and recheck them on the outdoor and on the indoor stacks. And uh, we'll just see, uh, see how, how the, the, the data pans out, which is the, the better location for me to be stacking the new wood. And I'm not sure which one it's going to be. Um, I mean, we get a lot of sunlight on here and a lot of uh, wind, um, but it's way more exposed to the elements. The, the greenhouse, um, 
got some sun. Uh, I've purpose built it to be uh, very uh, airy, um, but we'll get more heat built up in it, which will cause the, the vapors to rise. So I, I, I'm i very curious to see which one will, will be the uh, the better of the two. And if it's a wash, then great. It just uh, it means I can stack them wherever I like without, without worrying about it too much. So let's go take a quick look at, at, the, uh, at the woodshed and uh, yeah, then we'll go from there and we'll re revisit this in, uh, in, a, in maybe two weeks or so when I have some more data and uh, we'll, we'll see what we've got. So the shed's about 16 feet long by uh, about seven and a half feet wide and I chose those dimensions basically to make it a reasonable length and still fit um, below the threshold to require a building permit in our area. And uh, so essentially it's, uh, it's six four by four posts uh, with a frame constructed around that. Um, two by fours for a roof and covered in, uh, in plastic. And it's a, essentially it's the same kind of plastic and building material uh, that we use to build our uh, enclosure around our boat when we lived, uh, lived aboard our boat for, uh, for five years. Um, year-round in, in southern Ontario. Um, so I know this plastic will, will hold up and, uh, and we'll keep things dry. So we've got uh, two large doors that close. Um, down underneath them here there's lots of room for airflow to get underneath. Uh, it's facing mostly south. So there are some trees around uh, an apple, uh, two apple trees uh, here in here that uh, that shade us a little bit more than might be ideal um, but we definitely get a, a, a few maybe three or four hours of direct sunlight during the day and it does get nice and warm in there uh, off to the sides I've got these little flaps that open up and uh, allow for more airflow and you'll see the uh, at the at the back there's quite a large opening. So the idea is that the sun is going to beat down sort of on the on the front of things here. Vapors will will rise uh, up, hit the slanty roof and continue to rise and be able to exit out the out the back. So uh, I'm not getting any uh, condensation at all forming on the roof and, and dripping down onto the wood. I, all the moisture uh, is going up and out. Um, for the winter, I believe I am going to build a, a couple of uh, uh, flaps for the back that are similar to the sides, so I can uh, can close them up, or at least partially close them, so we don't get snow blowing in. But uh, yeah, apart from that, that's essentially how it works. And uh, the rest of the wood that's been uh, been stacked in here for a couple of weeks now is uh, reading on the meter in the nine percent range pretty consi consistently um, so uh, this new wood here that stacked it's reading in the mostly in the 25 range and some a little higher some a little lower hopefully will come down over the next couple of weeks into the nine range uh, but we'll chart that progress and uh, and get back to you with it and, and how it compares to the uh, the stack that's uh, out there and it's still in full sunlight out there even though it's well, maybe 5 p.m. or thereabouts. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll let you know when we have more data.